Welcome to the Chamber's Buzz. Today's guest is Pastor James Gellier, who's Vice Chairman of the Chairman's Economic Development Committee this year. We've got great things to share with you today. Our show today is proudly sponsored by Roger G. Taylor & Associates to communicate to the members of the Chamber and the Twin County at large a lot of the wonderful things happening in our area. Let's take a look at some recent activities. Good morning, I'm David Combs, Mayor of Rocky Mountain. We're down here on the historic Douglas Block and we have a Grand opening, ribbon cutting, but it's really not a grand opening because she's been in business here here a year, but she's been in business for many years, and so but, uh, we but, do want to congratulate Felicia uh, on her business here. She's got a great business. If you look around, she's getting ready for uh, Valentine's, and I'm sure every holiday she, she gets ready for it. And uh, Thank you, and good morning, Felicia. Uh, on behalf of the Chamber and the Board of Directors and the staff at the Chamber, we'd like to congratulate you on being in, opening your business and being successful. Uh, we'd love to like to welcome you to the downtown area. Uh, part of our agenda this year is to enhance and support the downtown development, and you're just part of the products that, that really help uh, enhance and, the downtown. Um, I do gift baskets. I design reefs and floor arrangements for homes, funerals, whatever the occasion. And I know now it's flooded with Valentine's in here, but our business is not limited to Valentine's Day. We do all occasion, whatever it is anniversaries, birthdays, whatever the occasion is, we are able to create something for you. So I just wanted to take the time to say thank you for all of you coming out and supporting me, and hopefully we can do business sometime. James, it's hey, wonderful to have you here. It's good to be back. <laughs> well, thank you. And I, I am a great fan of yours with your Bible study, I want to say right up front. You are the senior pastor at Word Tabernacle. That's right. Um, but you care so passionately about this community um, through your teachings, through your many activities and involvement in the community. It is so obvious that you want to lift up people and improve people's lives. Yeah, that's exactly right. I mean, you know, I have a firm belief of a marriage, a partnership between salvation and, and social improvement. Mm -hmm. And so even though our church is very adamant about preaching the gospel, we also really want to elevate people. And you know, when, when people come to you, they, have, they need jobs, mm -hmm. uh, counseling, direction for their children, whatever the case is. And so a big part of pastoring is really involving yourselves in people's lives wherever they may be involved, whatever, whatever that need is. Mm -hmm. You know, we found that with the school system, if a child is hungry, they can't learn. Right. And I would think so much of the same thing if children are hungry, if, if families are hurting, they can't be all that we want them to be, both spiritually and in, in just their whole life wellness. It, it's no doubt. I mean, so we have to involve ourselves and immerse ourselves in those areas. And quite frankly, Jean, that's the greater part of ministry and the greater part of being involved in a community is not those public spotlight kind of things you do mm -hmm. in front of the people on a Sunday, in our case, a Bible study on a Tuesday. It is the rest the other five or six days of the week mm -hmm. that you're really engaging yourself in their lives and trying to figure out what does this person really need? Mm -hmm. Because one of the things I've learned is you can have four or five great things going on in your life, but if you have one major hindrance or difficulty, mm -hmm. it can pull down everything else. You know, sort of like having a toothache. Mm -hmm. You can feel outstanding. Mm -hmm. And if you have a toothache or your feet hurt, it can affect everything else that's good. That's so all you think about. That's dominating. <laughs> that's right. Well, you were so busy with your church and building the new church on West Mount Drive and all, but I've been really pleased to see you've been involved with the chamber. You see this as a, a venue to, to harness the talents and support of people in the business community to help in a lot of the efforts that you were already engaged in. Kind of tell us what's going on in the landscape right now in economic development that you see and how you think maybe the rest of us can can get involved and help. Yeah, yeah, I appreciate that. Well, you know, this was a real good relationship for me from the very beginning. When I came here seven years ago, almost immediately I got involved in the chamber 
And part of it is because even though I pastor a church, it's still a small business. Mm -hmm. um, it may be a not-for-profit business, but it's a, it's a business nonetheless. And so I really, we really try to run our church entrepreneurially. We try to use those principles and those practices in terms of the business decisions that we make. And so for me, being a part of a chamber was a good fit. Um, and then the opportunity came about to start talking about what we can do in terms of community and economic development. Mm -hmm. And that is really, really at the heartbeat of a lot of what we do as a church, mm -hmm. is how do we empower the community that we're located in and how do we make the city a better place? And so this was a wonderful fit for me because it's hard to involve yourself in so much because again, you are busy at your own church or your mm -hmm. own business, whatever it is. Mm -hmm. um, but this was a good fit because I kind of do both together. Mm -hmm. um, and the reason why it was such a good fit, Gene, is about probably about a year and a half ago, we did a, a church-wide survey and we discovered that 31% of our congregation was unemployed. Mm. And at that point, I realized that, wow, we really have to do something about job creation. Mm -hmm. um, and so my focus kind of shifted at that point. Mm -hmm. I said, what do we do to create jobs in Rocky Mount and Eastern North Carolina? Um, and so when the opportunity to do community economic development came up, this was like a perfect fit. Mm -hmm. Because the chamber is really good at trying to find established businesses and bringing them in. And, and with the hope maybe that we'll you know, attract a new larger employer and those mm -hmm. kinds of things. But the heartbeat of the American fiber economically is still the small business. Mm -hmm. And we've got to find ways to forge ahead with new business opportunities and to take smaller businesses that exist now and grow them. Mm -hmm. And we can grow existing small businesses by 20, 25%. That's a lot of jobs and a, yes. a big help to the community. And so we wanted to find ways that we could develop the community apart from what the chamber was doing in terms of attracting businesses and saying, what can we deliberately do around entrepreneurship. Mm -hmm. That's the real strategy for us, is to really spend some time identifying people's skill set, identifying what people do well, and then saying, how can we come alongside of them, and how can we partner with them to get this small business going? And that's very mm -hmm. complex, because it's almost like what I like to refer to as an ecosystem. Mm -hmm. You know, you've got all of these parts operating together. You've got these living entities, these non-living entities. They've got to find a way to coexist and support one another. Mm -hmm. So we have to find a way for established businesses to be able to coexist in this citywide effort with people who are unemployed, mm -hmm. underemployed, and in some situations, Gene, unemployable. Mm -hmm. And for some people, this is gonna be the only real avenue by which we can help them kind of forge ahead with their life. Is there a committee already of people who, because I, I know when you were speaking with the chamber at one point, you said that that there were already people working on that. Is this the group at your church, or are there other churches involved in it, or how, how broad is the existing yeah, group? It's, it's both our church and some local churches and a few small business people. Okay. Um, right, they haven't given me permission yet to release who they are, but I'll tell you one, one way this really developed for us is, is some time ago I gave a presentation um, at one of the local clubs, and when I gave the presentation at the club, it was with the Rotaries, mm -hmm. and um, they were very, very responsive. And I had two small business owners come up to me and say, "I want to partner with you on this. Great. What is it going to cost? What is it going to take in order for us to get these new businesses started?" Mm -hmm. And we're talking about things like, um, you know, I'll give you an easy example, mm -hmm. and I'll just use my church as an example. But the pulpit that I preach from, all the lecterns in our church, the communion table, mm -hmm. the, the, you know, all the items that we have within our church, all of that stuff is made in Rocky Mount, 100% of it. Good. There are 350,000 churches in America. Mm -hmm. And so if it's good enough for our church to use a Rocky mm -hmm. Mount made pulpit, mm -hmm. surely it will be good enough for other churches. Um, you have people who are in the hairdressing business, people that need child care. One major issue is you know, looking for tailors and seamstresses and people mm -hmm. that can sew. And so there are lots of creative things that we can do with people that are currently unemployed or undeployable mm -hmm. that we can help them kind of you know, start making a life for themselves. Now where it becomes complicated, Gene, is that we have to also look at housing for these people. Mm -hmm. Because obviously if it costs a person six or seven hundred dollars a month to live, that small business is probably not going to support them in the beginning. Mm -hmm. You know, if they're fortunate, they may only make maybe a thousand dollars a month to get started, something like that. But if we can find them low income housing that's affordable mm -hmm. and that's safe and it's in a good community, that's maybe three hundred or three hundred and fifty dollars a month. That gives them an opportunity without having a high cost of living mm -hmm. to be able to jumpstart their business. Are you looking at downtown at all as a possible place to start locating some of these businesses? Absolutely. As a matter of fact, I've been preaching this sermon to my congregation. Um, one of our 
congregation members um, who's a, a, a child psychiatrist here in Rocky Mount has decided to relocate her practice downtown. That building is being renovated right now. The old Rose and Bloom Levy building. Exactly. I'm watching that. She's my neighbor. <laughs> yeah, she, and she's going to be a great neighbor. It's Good. a wonderful practice, but that, that came directly out of an emphasis at our church to say we've got to develop our small businesses in a different way. We currently have a building down there. We're looking at trying to buy some others. Um, we're looking at moving uh, into one of the buildings, a hairdresser, a full-blown salon. Mm -hmm. A lot of times people get nervous when you say a hairdressing salon, but I'm talking about a concierge shop where people are doing shoe shining and you can get your nails done. Mm -hmm. It's sort of a whole full-blown type of thing. So there are some other opportunities that we're looking at. I personally think downtown is going to happen. Mm -hmm. And anyone, anyone who's looking at doing a business, I strongly recommend them look at downtown. It may not pay off for the next three or four years, but in the long run, I think it's going to be a great investment. And, and as a personal endorsement, I can't think of anybody I would rather have say that than you <laughs> because you make things happen. So let's take a break and we'll be right back. Okay. Stay with us, please. We are the past, present, and the future leadership of your Chamber of Commerce. We are business members focusing on new beginnings, boldly creating our Twin Counties future. Members working toward broader thinking, community reinvestment, and public policy supporting strong business. We are partnerships that create new beginnings. We are business and community leaders working together for a better tomorrow. And this is my time. Welcome back, and we want to thank Roger G. Taylor & Associates for sponsoring this show. Thank you, Roger. We really do appreciate it. And James, I'm excited that you're excited about downtown. There are a lot of empty spaces in this community that are just sitting there waiting yeah. for some dynamic young entrepreneur or older entrepreneur, I mean all ages. That's right. And I'm sure you're aware of the community college support we have, of SCORE. There are lots of resources here. That's right to help people. You know, I agree because we've even used Nash Community College specifically uh, to do entrepreneurial classes, business development classes. They always fill up. People are very excited mm -hmm. to be able to, whether they're on marketing or bookkeeping or business proposal writing or whatever mm -hmm. the case is. So there are a lot of great support. And I personally, Gene, you know, when I came here, so many people would talk about not wanting to be here because what they didn't see. Mm -hmm. And that was exactly why I did want to be here mm -hmm. because I view that as opportunity. Mm -hmm. And so when I look at a downtown location, I think, man, what a great place to put a really, really nice restaurant. I mean, mm -hmm. a really nice restaurant. You know, whenever I go to some of these restaurants in Wilson, for example, as opposed to going to Raleigh, there are always Rocky Mountain people in them. Mm -hmm. You know, and so there are great opportunities here, whether it's going to be a restaurant or some retail establishments, um, or even a place to bring an accounting practice or a legal practice. Mm -hmm. I mean, I just think the opportunities are endless. It's going to really work out well. And in the Douglas Block, we do have a legal practice. Um, there's an entrepreneur who put a bed and bath shop there. So, so there are some, but, but volume will bring more traffic, which will bring more support for everybody. Absolutely. You know, yeah. being from Philadelphia, the thing that I miss the most now that I live in North Carolina is going to be very shocking when I say this to people, are sidewalks. Because you you know you're used to being in an environment mm -hmm. where people walk past each other's homes. They walk. You don't have to walk mm -hmm. in the street to do it. And I love going downtown because you know they've done the landscaping, the streetscaping is very nice. You can walk mm -hmm. along where the shops are. And I just think it's gonna it's a great place to do a business. And I think we're now because of the chamber's efforts to do community and economic development and mm -hmm. and giving me the leverage. And I want to say, I really appreciate the fact that when you. When you take on a role in the chamber, they give you leverage mm -hmm. to be able to explore it in a way that you think you can be successful. Mm -hmm. And there's a lot of ways to do community and economic development. I just really believe one of the best ways to do it is through entrepreneurship, getting people to establish small businesses mm -hmm. and then teaching them how to grow those businesses. So they're giving me leverage to do that. Mm -hmm. and so whether it's taking some empty space, because remember, Every time a building gets renovated, that's more jobs. Mm -hmm. Somebody has to renovate that building. Somebody has to run that wire. Mm -hmm. You know, somebody is more insurance business because now someone has to insure that building. Mm -hmm. It's more utilities for the city. You know, so it's, it's a win for everybody. Mm -hmm. are, 
are you going to potentially bring in people who teach entrepreneurship or how can how can we help you what yeah. can we do you know we're already doing some of that bringing in people that are teaching entrepreneurship we're partnering mm -hmm. with the community college we're bringing in outside resources from the statewide department of commerce mm -hmm. so the department of commerce at the state level has been very helpful to us mm -hmm. uh, we're talking about what what entrepreneurship looks like specifically in the faith-based community mm -hmm. um, and some just so people get an idea to begin thinking about some of the opportunities I tell people think about what it is that you do well mm -hmm. or what it is that you really enjoy that people are always complimenting you about mm -hmm. you know like I still brag Jane that I make the absolute best potato salad in oh, the God. world I, I'm still convinced of that well but, open a little deli and, and you exactly. let them use your recipe so I tell people you know if you think you make something that good then let's try to negotiate a deal with Harris Teeter or something where mm -hmm. they've got you know James's potato salad on the shelf mm -hmm. or Whatever it is, um, Richard Joyner is making his own honey out in Canada. Right, you know, with and the so young we, people. Exactly, it's a great project. It's great honey too. Mm -hmm. It's the only thing we use at our church, mm -hmm. and it's a wonderful opportunity. And so, if people can cook well, if they have good sewing skills, artists, we have art pieces of art in our church that are done by local artists. Mm -hmm. And so, there's so many opportunities, and we have to find a way to to support local business and then mm -hmm. to grow our own local business. And the way the larger businesses get involved that have hundreds of employees or even thousands of employees mm -hmm. is by identifying what products and or services are we purchasing outside of Rocky mm -hmm. Mountain. You know, are we using a trucking company in Raleigh mm -hmm. or in Wilmington? And can we possibly partner with a new person? Can we even spend the money to teach a small group of truckers how to purchase their own vehicle, how to maintain it, and then mm -hmm. use that local support? Who are we buying our boxes from? Mm -hmm. Who's doing our packaging service? Mm -hmm. If we start looking at those kinds of things and begin doing those services locally, I think we'll be shocked by the kind of volume of business we can create. Along that line, we just remodeled Almond Structure at Westridge. And in looking at who would do the marketing, we got a local person. And who would create the signs, we got a local person. And now we give free coffee. And we support Kakalaki, which is a local awesome. coffee group. But you're right, all of us, it's incumbent upon every one of us to think, what do we buy, what do we do that we can get in Rocky Mount? Because until we all start doing that, we won't see the volume of growth and support that, that we need to see to bring, to help Rocky Mount have everything that we want. You know, that, that's exactly right. And there are many opportunities. I mean, elder care and senior care is a great mm -hmm. example. Elders and seniors who need transportation services, mm -hmm. who need products and services who are directed at them and their age group, mm -hmm. who need housing, mm -hmm. affordable, safe. I'm talking about non-medical type of needs that they have. Um, the hospital system, you know, with new Medicare and Medicaid regulations and they're mm -hmm. being, you know, taxed, so to speak, mm -hmm. you know, when a, a patient is readmitted. You know, having people to help manage that flow of people so they don't get readmitted mm -hmm. so quickly. Um, taking volumes of paperwork. I'm amazed. We now have a whole closet in our church with offering envelopes because we're required to keep them for seven years. And I think some regulations may even be up to 10 years, mm -hmm. certain paperwork. Well, having companies that specialize in digitizing that information, mm -hmm. you know, getting that stuff scanned into a system. Mm -hmm. I mean, most businesses have those kinds of needs mm -hmm. and we can, we can create those kinds of solutions right here in Rocky Mountain. And I know shredding, you know, people don't want to jam up their own shredders if they have large volume, trying to get somebody locally who can come and pick that up and, and dispose of it. That's right. For you. So the sky's the limit, isn't it? It really is. I think the list goes on and on. I mean, we, can, we need to take advantage of the Internet. Mm -hmm. So blogging, I think we have some great local authors. Um, you know, I think about, I'm in the church business, obviously. Mm -hmm. I think we do it pretty well. Mm -hmm. Well, there are 350,000 other churches in America. Mm -hmm. You know, so we can take a small division of one of our areas and write a small pamphlet or a book and say, this is how we've learned to be successful in evangelism or discipleship mm -hmm. or men's development. And then we can market that book to another group of people. Well, every business can do something like that. Mm -hmm. you, know, you, you know, you have expertise in being a, a female-owned entrepreneur and business owner. Mm -hmm. You know, there are lots of people who need that expertise. And so the list just goes on and on, I think, in terms of what we can do. I think it's very doable, mm -hmm. I th but it's going to take an entire system and an entire city mm -hmm. focusing on it. Mm -hmm. You know, we're gonna, the banks are going to need to be friendly to small businesses. The larger businesses are going to have to look for opportunities for them. Um, the the, the not-for-profit sector and the church sector, we're going to have to offer classes and, and mentorship mm -hmm. and cooperation. But if we really focus on it, mm -hmm. I think we can really get it done. And I think we're going to look up in three or four years from now, 
maybe five years from now, I believe Rocky Mountain can still be like another carry where people are like, man, I really want to buy a home there. I want to live mm -hmm. there. I want to raise my family there. And that's what we're trying to help create in terms of our part of it on the community and economic development side. Well, there's no one whom I would rather have taken the lead in that. So thank you, James. Thank and, you. and please keep us all informed for how ways we can help you too. I do, and I appreciate you spotlighting on your show. Thanks, Jean. Uh, you are certainly welcome, and thank you for joining us. We'll see you next week. Have a great evening. We are the past, present, and the future leadership of your Chamber of Commerce. We are business members focusing on new beginnings, boldly creating our Twin Counties future. Members working toward broader thinking, community reinvestment, and public policy supporting strong business. We are partnerships that create new beginnings. We are business and community leaders working together for a better tomorrow. And this is my time.